So you've chosen the most difficult task for today. This one is this castle with three towers and two walls in between. Something that's also quite difficult here is where the walls are sat just back behind the towers. Now in real castles, the towers stick out like this so that the people in the towers can see across, not just out from their castle, uh, to make sure they can defend against attackers from all sides. That's why castle towers look like this. This drawing has some difficult parts in it. First amongst which is there's a lot to do. You're going to have a lot of construction lines on here and it's really important that they stay light and the other lines, when you're happy with them, then they become dark, but only those. We're also going to have a look at putting in a curve on the top of our doorway, a difficult thing. And all of our windows are going to come up to a point at the top, so they curve up to a point and then down again, in the way that you often see on castles. Now you're welcome to change that, of course. You could do cross-shaped windows. You often see windows that are cross-shaped with circles on each corner. Um, they did that in castles to allow people to see out and have a good field of view, whilst all be also being able to get a, a bow or something that shoots an arrow uh, into that space to see up and down as well. So I'll show you how to do this. I'm not going to finish this drawing. I'm going to leave some space on this so that you've got some, uh, a chance to show what you'd like to add. I'm not going to add a drawbridge. I'm not going to add lots of windows. I'm not going to add any flags. But these are all things that you might think at the end of the video, if you have time today, you could have a go at doing those as well. And I'd love to see what you end up with. Thanks very much, good luck, and here's how. Start with a line straight through the middle of your piece of paper. It's called the horizon line, keep it straight, keep it horizontal, take your time and pop that line straight through there. Then add two dots, one on each end. These are your vanishing points, and these are the places that all of our lines will go to, unless they're vertical. Then you can place a vertical line anywhere on your page. This line will be the middle of our drawing. So think about where you want that middle line to be. I've drawn mine slightly off to the left of center so that I have more space uh, to add my castle in full on the right and it'll be slightly uh, squished together on the other side on the left. We can then use this line and draw back to each vanishing point from the top and bottom exactly the same as we've been doing so far on both sides. So from the vanishing point to the top and bottom of that line on both sides. We can then draw where we think the edges of this central tower will be, a vertical line to the left and right of that center line we've already drawn. And this will be that tower that's nearest to us. We can then add a tower that's further away to our right by putting in a vertical line where we want that tower to be between those construction lines and then another line to the right of that. And this is where this drawing gets quite difficult because the wall sits in front of that far tower. So we're gonna drop back just a little bit with a short line, notice it goes to the left-hand vanishing point, and then bring in the front edge of that wall. Where those two lines meet, we're going to come up vertically for that tower at the back there, but notice the top of the tower slopes downwards towards the left-hand vanishing point. And that's where we get that face of the tower. Now, the wall isn't going to be the same height as that tower. The way I've drawn it here is with the wall at the full height of that far tower, and we don't want that. So we can now decide where our wall height will actually be, and then extend that tower back behind that far wall and drop it down behind. We now need to draw the wall on the left-hand side, and we need it to be the same distance set back in as the one we've just drawn. So notice that I've used my ruler to mark the center line where that wall is, and then take that point around to the other side so that it sits at the back of the drawing on the left as well. And we can use that to mark where our wall is from that middle tower to the left tower at the back there. We can then do the same with the top of that wall so that both of our walls are the same height. We mark the height of our wall on the center line take that point to our left as well, and then use that height as the height of our wall on the left as well. And this keeps both walls the same height in this perspective.
Now it's time to add some turrets. These are actually called crenellations. People call them turrets at the top of towers. Crenellations is the correct word. But either way, they're the point at the top of a castle tower where your guards and soldiers can stand and look out in the relative safety provided by those crenellations on either side. Now these have a depth. They all need to be the same depth, so we're going to come down from that, from that top a certain distance and mark that line on the left and right side of our drawing. We'll need this on all three towers. And then we can start to think, okay, where should these lines go? And put in some rough points that we can drop vertical lines down from. These vertical lines go from the top of the towers to that construction line that we just drew to keep all of our crenellations the same height or depth from the top edge of that tower on all three towers. Now we can commit to some bold lines. This tower in the centre, the middle part of our drawing, is not going to have any lines that come through it now. There won't be any walls in front of it or anything like that, like with the other towers. So we can put this one into bold at this time. So we're going to reserve these dark lines for the most important ones, the ones we want people to see. So we can drop in the middle, left and right edges of this tower, uh, the bottom edges as well. Make sure that you always use those vanishing points to keep your lines accurate. And then the top edges too, remembering to let those top edges come up and down as we go across those crenellations to give our castle tower that shape that our soldiers can stand and hide behind to give them a good defensive position. So something you'll notice from this tower is that it looks like it's made from paper or card. It's very thin. It doesn't have the depth that stone would. So we can now take each of those crenellations and take their corners back to the vanishing point on the opposite side of the drawing. And this will make it look like our, our tower is made from stone with that thickness. So we take each corner of those crenellations, each corner, and take it back to the vanishing points. If the crenellations are on the left side of your drawing, those lines go to the right vanishing point. If those crenellations are on the right side of your drawing, take the lines to the left vanishing point on the opposite sides. We can now apply all of those same things to the walls and the other towers. I'm going to speed this part of the drawing up. I'm doing the same techniques that I just showed you. I'm putting in the lower edge where those crenellations drop down to with a construction line on both sides. I'm marking lightly with my pencil where I think those points should come down from. And once I'm happy with what I've drawn, I'm going to go over them with a bold pencil. So all of those stages, drop in the bottom edge, figure out where you want them to be. And when you're happy, go over them with a bold pencil. We can have a look at doing those now for the three towers and the two walls. So with all that work done, we can now move on to adding some details to our drawing. Please do remember that this drawing is very difficult because of the amount of things you have to draw. So if some of your lines have not gone quite right, please don't worry too much. This is a difficult thing to draw. Having a look now anyway at a doorway, we're going to put in a door that has uh, curved corners. But we'll start off with something that is rectangular, so vertical sides and then it's top edge that goes to that vanishing point on the right hand side of the drawing. Once we've done that, we need to decide where those curves start. So you can see that I've got a line across the top of my doorway, but also another one slightly further down. And it's from that second line that we can curve up to the top line. And we can mark where we think we want those curves to start and end. So they come from that line up to the top, along, and then back down again to the vertical side lines. Now inside of this doorway, I decided to add a portcullis, which is the, uh, the metal grid thing that drops down so that arrows can still be shot out of the castle against attackers. 
but prevents people from getting through. Now this portcullis is made up of vertical lines and then lines that come across, but they all go to the vanishing point. So make sure that your lines that go across your page go to the vanishing point. In my case, on that right hand side of my drawing. All the other lines there are vertical for that portcullis. They do have spikes on the bottom. I drew some tiny little spikes there. You're welcome to as well if you wish. Next up, I decided to add some windows to that central tower. These windows are going to come up to a point at the top and be quite thin, like you see in castles. Now notice that we start off with a line to mark the bottom edge of all of those windows, and then a construction line to mark the top edge of those as well, so we know where to start our windows and where they go up to as well, their bottom and top edges. Once we've done that, we can then decide how thick or thin we want them to be. And I recommend you do this with some light lines on your drawing, just to see what it's going to look like before you start putting your ruler there. You'll find that the ruler stops you seeing things. Um, so I like to do this with some light lines with my pencil first. We then need to decide where our arch tops are going to start from. So we need another construction line coming through our window to show that our curves start from this point and then go up to the top. That's what that extra line is for. And we can apply this to both sides of that tower. In fact, I'm not going to, but you're welcome to apply those windows to all three of your towers. And then once you're happy with where they're going to go, curve the top edge of each window up to the top line and down again, vertical sides, and the bottom edge goes to the vanishing point on whichever side of the castle the window's on. And of course, when you're happy, grab your bold pencil and go over those lines and make them stand out on your drawing so that the person looking at your page sees what you want them to see. Now there are a lot of lines on here with all of those other construction lines, so it's important to reserve those dark bold lines for the bits you want people to see when they look at your drawing. Now I didn't finish this one. I didn't add lots of other details. I didn't put in lots of stonework. Be careful if you do that. Keep those lines really faint, otherwise you'll overpower your drawing. I didn't add any flags. Where might you put flags? I didn't put windows on all of the towers. I only have one entrance. Perhaps you could have a go at adding some of these details and I'd love to see what you've done. And there we have it, our castle drawing. Thanks very much for joining me and I'll see you on the next one.